Hey guys, here I have the Razer Blade 14, my new 14 inch gaming laptop, which I picked up from Amazon just a couple of days ago. And in the last few days, I have replaced the SSD, I've updated Windows, I've installed a few apps, and I've been familiarizing myself with the laptop and taking notes as to what I like and what I don't like, such as the terrible webcam. So in the future, I will do a more comprehensive overview as to what this laptop is about. And I'll do a different video talking about how you can make the Ryzen CPU perhaps more efficient or perhaps more powerful. But what I'd like to do is just show you how you can get started with the Razer Blade 14. And this should hopefully appeal to anyone who has just bought this laptop or anyone who's thinking of buying it. So the first thing that I recommend doing is updating the BIOS of the Razer Blade 14. If I jump over to my browser, you will see that I've got a lot of pages linked here already. We've shown you these pages throughout this video. You don't have to take a note of them. They'll all be linked down below in the description area. So as far as updating the BIOS, all you have to do is to go to the official Razer website, go to support and search for Razer Blade 14. There, 2021. Once you're on this page, go down to drivers and downloads, and then you'll see the BIOS updater file, which at the time of recording is nearly about six months old at this point. So you simply download this file and then you run it and it will update the BIOS. The only real thing that you have to make sure you do here is make sure the power cable is connected. You don't want to update the BIOS without being charged up because if you lose power during a BIOS update, it can cause major problems and it's always a pain in the ass to resolve. So make sure you've got power when you're running that BIOS update. What I'd like to do now is talk about the storage situation of the Razer Blade 14. And there's two things that you should be aware of. The first thing being that there is only one M2 SSD slot in this laptop. And the second thing being that that solitary M2 slot supports PCI Express 3 drives. It doesn't support PCI Express 4. You can, of course, put PCI Express 4 drives in there, but you'd be wasting your money. Now, the other component that you can upgrade in this laptop is the Wi-Fi module. But 2021, 2022, most routers are still Wi-Fi 6, and the Wi-Fi module in here is 6C. So it's good to know that you can upgrade in a few years' time, but I think most people who are buying this laptop around now, they will be looking to upgrade the SSD, but probably not the Wi-Fi module. Now, should you upgrade the SSD? Well, that's something that you're going to have to work out yourself depending on the applications and the games, etc., that you're installing. Certainly from my point of view, I wanted to upgrade because I wanted more storage inside the laptop. I've always had laptops over the last few years that have had two SSDs so that I could put the operating system in one drive, put games and apps and different things on the other. But here with one drive, I'm trying to put most things onto that solitary drive. Now you can use things like the Samsung T5, T7 SSDs, there's enclosures, there's lots of different SSDs out there. And those drives should be fast enough for you to put your games on and you know put your apps on, etc. But you're always going to get the best performance from the SSD that's inside the laptop, certainly because this doesn't support Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. So if you've got games that are quite large, a couple of hundred gigabytes, you might want to upgrade this drive to a two or a four terabyte drive. Two terabyte drive is still kind of the sweet spot as far as storage and pricing, but you do have that option. Now, there is a good argument for not doing that, for keeping this Samsung one terabyte drive and just using SSDs for games and different things. But that's something you're going to have to decide yourself. But just as far as the default drive goes, there it's there. Not the most exciting thing to look at, but that is what is inside this laptop when you buy it. And I was really impressed with this drive when I tested it. I ran Crystal Disk Mark and I got read speeds of 3,570 megabytes per second and write speeds of 3,026. So, you know, benchmarks do change every time you run them, but this looks like it will consistently give you over 3,000 megabytes per second reading and writing. So at those speeds, are you going to miss PCI Express 4? I don't think you are. I think most people will be happy with the fact that this you know, supports PCI Express 3 and not 4. 4. Support for PCI Express 4 would have been welcomed, of course, 
But the reason I'm pointing this out is don't go out there and buy more expensive PCI Express 4 SSDs because this laptop will not utilize those 5,000 megabytes per second read and write speeds. It'll be limited down to about 3,000 or so. So there's some great prices on PCI Express 3 drives out there. So something to bear in mind before you buy this laptop or just after you buy this laptop, you can, of course, you know, change drive at any point, but think about how you're going to use this laptop. Think about the games you're going to install, and that will help you make an informed decision as to whether you should upgrade your SSD or not. As long as you've got the right tools, changing the SSD inside the Razor Blade 14 is simple. There's 10 Torx T5 screws on the back panel, and once those are removed, you just have to pry open the back panel, and that will reveal the inside of the laptop. You'll see the SSD and you'll see the Wi-Fi module and the SSD is held down by one Phillips screw. And once you remove that screw, you can remove the old SSD, you can put your new drive in and then just simply secure the Phillips screw again. And then once you've checked everything, you can put the back panel back on and start screwing those T5 screws back in. Now, as far as using the right tools, what I would say is make sure you've got a good Torx T5 screwdriver. The one that I use is the one that's inside my iFixit kit. And I've done a video about this before. It's a great kit, but you'll find other screwdrivers out there. But just make sure you've got a good kit. If you use the wrong size, like T4, T6, or a Phillips screw, if it's the wrong screw, you can thread that screw, and then you're going to have real problems getting it back open. So just make sure you've got a good Torx T5 screwdriver to actually remove those screws because those screws are annoyingly small and they're very easy to mess up if you don't use the right tool. As far as prying it back open, I found the back panel a little bit difficult to pry open initially. I initially looked to use this, but I thought that was a little bit harsh that I fixed it pry tool. I used a, pl uh, a plastic wedge. I just kind of went round and I kind of opened it up. And once I did that, the back panel did come off. You just have to go around the, the, the back of the laptop panel and just make sure that it all kind of raises up so that you don't damage the plastic. When you get the Razor Blade 14, you'll notice that Razor don't really put any other software on there apart from Razor Synapse, which you can download again very easily. So if you've upgraded your SSD, the easiest way to get going is to simply add your new SSD into the laptop, change the drive, and then simply install Windows again. And you can do that simply by going to Windows and you go to the Windows download page and use the Windows installation tool. And all you need is like a 16 gigabyte flash drive. And once you've downloaded the Windows creation tool, all you have to do is insert the drive beside the laptop here. And then when you load up Windows, it should pop up to install Windows onto your fresh drive. Because remember, when you put your new SSD in there, it won't have any information on there. Now, if it doesn't default to the Windows creation tool, what you need to do is go into the BIOS. And then once you're in the BIOS, you can change the boot priority, but it should default to it. It should realize that that drive is there if you've got your flash drive connected to the laptop. Now, if you've been using your laptop for a few months, you've probably got a lot of games installed, a lot of apps installed, you've updated Windows, and you've set up the laptop in the way that you want it. So if you then decide to upgrade your SSD, you probably don't want to use the Windows creation tool and install Windows and set everything up again. And in that situation, it's perhaps better to clone the drive. Now, cloning the drive means that you're going to copy the contents from the old SSD, which is in the laptop, to your new SSD, which is blank and there's nothing on it. And you can do that using an M2 enclosure. Now, the M2 enclosure that I've got here from Ugreen, I've reviewed this on my channel before. It's like 20 or 30 bucks, it's not that expensive. And I've got an old 960 Evo in here. And essentially you'd have your old drive in the laptop. You hook this up to the type C or type A port or whatever. And then you simply use the cloning software to copy the, the contents of the old drive to the new drive. Now, as far as cloning software goes, a lot of SSD companies, storage companies, will give you cloning software when you pick up the SSD itself. So if you buy a new SSD, they might give you software to help you clone the drive. Now, I kind of messed up here because I've cloned probably about 20 SSDs over the last couple of years, and I've used a few different apps, but the app that I used quite a lot was Macrium Reflect. So you can pick up Macrium Reflect 8, and it's free of charge. And I've used this about a dozen or so times, never had any issues with it, and it's always cloned software correctly. 
I don't know why, I still don't know why, but when I tried to do that to clone the drive that I put into the Razorblade 14, I got a lot of errors. It seemed to have cloned the drive correctly, but when I uh, loaded up the laptop again, it was giving me all these random errors and I tried it again, it didn't work. And then I tried the recovery drive, it didn't work. And then I realized that I was being a complete idiot. There was nothing on this laptop that I had to lose. So I used the USB flash drive with the Windows Media Creation tool on it and I simply installed Windows and doing that saved me a ton of time. So like I said, if you've not set anything up here, not installed any games and you've not got anything that, you, you know, that can't be downloaded quickly again, the easiest thing to do is to simply install Windows using the Windows Media Creation tool. And then you can change the boot priority in the BIOS if you need to. Cloning software is useful though, if you've been using the laptop for a long time, say for example, I upgrade from two terabytes to four terabytes, that's the route I would go down. And there's no hassle doing that because the drive is being installed into the same equipment, the same laptop. But just bear that in mind guys, once you've, if you've not got a lot of, you know, data, a lot of apps, nothing that you're scared to lose, just install Windows again. It could save you a lot of time. So we're now at the point where we can update Windows, check the drivers are up to date and install some other useful system applications. If you did not change your SSD, this is what you would do directly after updating your BIOS. So if I jump over to my Razorblade 14, you see this delightful blue screen, I'll show you how to update Windows. I'm sure most of you are aware of this already. All you have to do is type in update or updates at the bottom, type that into the search bar, click check for updates, and then Windows will do its thing. Now, as you can see, my Razorblade 14 is up to date, but normally you would see 10, 15, 20 different fixes, new downloads when you get a new laptop, and there'll be new features, there'll be bug fixes, etc. And you may have to restart your computer many times for it to get up to speed. You can see I've got Windows 11 to check out at one point as well. Now, the other thing is the Intel driver and support assistant. And you can see this is what it shows me for my main PC, which I'm recording through right now. But if I jump back to the Razorblade 14, once you've downloaded the Intel driver and support assistant, which I'll leave a link to, you'll see it installed down the bottom here. And you simply right click it, check for new drivers, and it'll load up. And you can see here, Razorblade 14 date manufacturer. And you can see, everything in my computer. You can see the CPU, the 15800HX, the, the Radeon graphics, um, high definition audio, and you can see that it's updated the Wi-Fi driver and the wireless Bluetooth driver already. So you can see the Samsung drive that I've upgraded as well. So the great thing about that is that it will let you know when there is a new update. It'll tell you that a driver has to be updated. And it's one of the best uh, applications you can download because it just makes sure everything is up to date. You're not going to have any problems if that is installed. Okay, so back to the browser and I'll show you this. So this is the AMD Radeon software page and I'll, I'll speak about this later. I want to show you the software. When you download this, you have an option of simply installing the driver so that you know the, you, all the Ryzen drivers are up to date, but you can also use the software and I'll show you the software in a bit. Now, when I ran my Windows update initially, it installed an AMD Radeon app from the Windows Store and it didn't work. Windows automatically downloaded it because it detected the AMD chip in the Razorblade 14, but for whatever reason, that application didn't work. So I downloaded this software instead. And that's what I would recommend. If you download this software, you can make sure that your AMD Ryzen CPU is up to date. The other thing that you can do is download GeForce Experience. Now this is probably going to be installed once you get your Razorblade 14. And if I jump back to the laptop, once it's installed, again, you can simply use that to only download the driver, but you can download GeForce Experience as well. And I'm sure you're aware of, you know, of what GeForce Experience is all about. It will optimize the games that you download and you can use it to get the latest drivers as well. And yeah, not everyone is a, is a fan of GeForce Experience, but you can use it to simply install the latest driver. And that's one of the things that I do recommend checking once you get your Razorblade 14, make sure you've got the latest NVIDIA driver. It might not be the latest one that's on there. So the last thing I want to recommend, if we jump back to the browser, is Razor Synapse 3. Now, when you get your Razorblade laptop, this will be installed already. It will be there. 
But if you've upgraded the SSD and installed Windows from scratch, this is what you'll have to download again. And I will speak about this software in a bit. But like I said, if, if you've not upgraded the SSD, you probably don't have to install NVIDIA GeForce Experience. You probably don't have to install the Razer software. That should be installed already. When you download the AMD software, it will ask you if you only want to update AMD drivers, but I do encourage you to install the software as well because it is quite useful. Got it here. So you can see here AMD Radeon software. So on the homepage here, you can see that it says last played Call of Duty Modern Warfare and it's showing 111.6 frames per second with the Razer Blade 14. So about three days ago, I was playing with low settings, I was playing with high settings, I was playing at 1080p, I was playing at 1440p. I was just trying to mess around with different settings on this and in the game to you know, try and find the best setup for the game. That's something I do have to spend more time doing. Now, if you go to the gaming page, you will see games that you've installed and it's got Warzone here. And if you click on it, you can customize the game and you can launch your own optimal settings optimal settings every time you play the game. Now you can get this, get to that page from the home page as well. You can see here, adjust game graphics. That will show you the last game. Now, if I hide myself for a second, you can see that it's showing me the total time played for this particular game, which is always handy to see. But yeah, you can see the, the games profile that I've got here. Um, gaming, esports, power saving, standard, um, Radiant anti-lag, chill, boost, you know, you can go through and change all these settings. They'll bring up different things like minimum frames per second, maximum frames per second. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different options here. We've got AMD FreeSync, we've got scaling mode. And then if you go down to the bottom, you'll see advanced mode. And then there's all these additional options for filtering quality, optimization. I'm going to have to go through and research all of these. You know, at this point, I am just playing around with things and, and seeing what happens. But I do have to go through it. All, all of this and I need to look for optimal settings and try and set this up the best way that I can. But I really do like this setup. I love that this gives me much more control over games. I think it's a really cool feature. So if I jump over to the performance tab, you'll see that it says GPU, VRAM, RAM and CPU. I guess this is handy to see, but you know, you can install HW info. You can see a lot of this from the taskbar as well, the task manager, sorry. Um, and you go to advisors, you can see gaming, esports, power saving, and standard, but you can set up a custom mode as well. But when you go to this advisors page, go down to global graphics here, and you can see there's a custom option if you start customizing one of the, the pre made profiles. And you'll see just changing this, you'll see that the options are different, you know, depending on which profile that you choose. And again, these are the default settings which you can apply to all games, and then you can go into the game and apply different settings if you want. So it's, it's quite good. I think there's a lot of control here over what you can do. I think there's a lot of options here. So you've got the systems tab here, which is showing you, if I hide myself, you can see that it's showing you the VRAM, it's showing you CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM. I can save the settings. I can do a factory reset. I've got the graphics tab and then we've got display. And then on display, again, AMD FreeSync, GPU scaling. We've got the optimization for the battery, balanced. You've got specifications there as well for the resolution. There's so much here. There's so much to get through. Um, we've got video settings here, different video profiles, outdoor sports. We've got hotkeys, and then we've got preferences. There you go. And there's different things here. Language always on top. And, you know, you can get to this at any point just by clicking the settings page, at the, uh, settings icon, sorry. There's a settings icon, and then there's also a sidebar option. So you can... Set it up like that. So like I've said many times, I am still going through this. I'm still messing around with this. And I do need to play around with it and, and, and play around with the different settings to see what's the best setup for me, this laptop, my games, you know, whether I'm plugged in, whether I'm using the battery. But I would encourage you to download this software. There's a lot that you could use here. So the last thing I'd like to show you all today is Razer's Synapse software. And this software does come pre-installed in the Razer Blade 14. But as you would expect, if you do upgrade your SSD and install Windows from scratch, you will have to download this software again. Now, for me, 
I'm not a massive fan of this software, if I'm honest. There are some cool options here, and I'll show you some of them. But a lot of it is related to RGB, and I don't like the fact that it does use a couple of hundred megabytes of memory, which I guess is not a major thing, but when you've only got 16 gigabytes of memory soldered onto the laptop, it's a little bit annoying that a few hundred is taken up with this application. Certainly when it still uses, you know, some processes after you've closed it down, and then you have to restart it, etc. But you'll see some options here. You've got Chroma Connect, you've got Chroma Studio, a lot of different effects that you can use here for the RGB, and you can, you know, assign different colors and effects to different keys. I'm more of a pick a, you know, a, a pre-selected option, just let it run. But if you want to customize your RGB keyboard, there's a lot of cool options there. Um, we we'll back up. We've got Chroma Visualizer, different effects and options here as well. So there's a lot of different things to explore. Now, I have covered this in the past. I've got a Razer uh, eGPU, the Chroma X, and I explored the software in the past. And like I said, for me, the, the cons of this software kind of outweigh the benefits. But from a laptop point of view, what you want to do is click on Devices, and you'll see the laptop. And again, you can click on a key, and then you've got all these different options. You can change the keyboard function, mouse function. There is a huge amount of customization here. So although I'm crapping on this software, it's not a, an application I see myself using a lot. If you do want to customize your keyboard, there, there's a ton of customization options here. So I guess you have to be applauded for that. Now, you've got different lighting options here. You've got different uh, brightness options, you know, plugged in or battery. So even if you don't like the software, if you're not a big fan of the software, you'll still find some different options here control the logo RGB as well. Um, but the, for me, the biggest reason to use this software at all is the if you click on Synapse, click on Razorblade 14, go to performance. This is the main reason to use this application, in my opinion. Now, you can see I've got it on balance mode, but I was also messing about with custom, and I had it set at low for the CPU and low for the GPU. And this is one thing I'm going to explore in a future video. I want to play around with these different presets CPU, low, medium, high, boost, and then do the same for the GPU. I'm not sure how useful these are. I'm not sure if it's better to, you know, to do this through the AMD application instead. But there are some cool options here. And I did notice a difference going from high to low. I did notice the fans going down. The fans, I mean, it's a gaming laptop. The fan noise can be hard, you know, can be quite loud if you're pushing the, the system hard. But the fan noise did drop a lot when I put it down to low and I didn't see the performance dropping too much, which I guess is credit towards the the 5900 HX CPU. So yeah, I've got it in balance mode, but I can control the fan as well. And I can put the fan right up and I can put the fan right down. It gives me a little bit more control over it. But a lot of these things, you know, I like to customize things a little bit, but I like to automate things as much as I can once I've you know, did that initial configuration, that initial setup. But this will come, this software will come pre-installed in, in your um, in your laptop when you buy it. You can download it if you do a fresh install of Windows, and then you can play around with all these different settings. For me, it's not the best application out there, but there are a few useful settings, a, a few useful customization options that are there. You just have to you know, get past all the RGB stuff but it is useful to have some, you know, some of the customization options, even just from a keys point of view, highlight certain keys, assign different functionality to different keys as well. So some of you might like it. It's up to you guys though. Try it for yourself, see what you like about it, see what you don't like about it. Long term, I'll be aiming to try and remove it from my own system. So there it is, guys. This has been the Razorblade 14. And I hope you now have a better understanding as to how you can get started with this portable gaming laptop. Now, there are some additional steps if you are upgrading the SSD, but for the most part, all you have to do is update the BIOS, update Windows, and then just make sure that the drivers are up to date. And then you can spend some time with the AMD Radeon software and with Razer Synapse to try and customize the laptop and you know change things around, configure the RGB, and tweak settings to see if you can get more performance from this or more efficiency, depending and what you're looking for. But there's a lot of customization options there if you do download those AMD and Razer apps. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you get any questions, please do leave a comment below. And until next time, take care.